Hello and welcome to Microsoft Excel training. Today we will learn how to start working with Microsoft Excel. So to get started, all you need to do is click this area, which is under the search, and type Excel. Now just to let you know, whenever an Excel uh, software opens up, whatever is the very first file that you open in Excel, it is called a blank workbook. It is not called an Excel sheet. Inside the workbook, you have one or more than one sheets, depending on however many sheets you want to add. One more thing to keep in mind, if you are starting to build an Excel workbook, it is not a bad idea to check Excel templates by simply clicking on more templates. When you do that, it allows you to look at some of the templates right here or you can actually search for a template. For example, I want to search for all the possible invoice templates. Now these are several different invoice templates available. For example, if I'm interested in getting an invoice with sales tax, I can just simply click on that invoice template and click the create button. And I have the entire invoice template given to me. Now I can just make changes to it according to however I want to get things done. Also, if I want to start a brand new Excel workbook, I can press Control N. Control N as in Nancy will bring a brand new workbook. And you can see right here at the bottom, oh, the Excel icon on the taskbar, it now looks like stack sheets. So when you hover over, it allows you to switch between the two. If you are a keyboard shortcut person, then pressing Alt Tab allows you to switch back and forth between the two. If you are interested in only closing the workbook, but not interested in closing the Excel software itself, well, Alt F4 is a function key that will close Excel for you. But if you only want to close a workbook, you press Control W. Control W, and notice, that invoice template Excel workbook is closed. So the shortcut is Control W. And then if you are interested in closing the Excel software, you can press Alt F4 function key and that will close the Excel workbook. Now let's start Excel again. Once the Excel comes up, we will double click on blank workbook. And as you can see right over here, you have a workbook and at the bottom you have what we call sheet one is the only sheet on your Excel workbook. If you want to add more sheets, you can simply click the plus icon next to sheet one in the bottom left corner and it will add sheets. This is how I can add as many sheets as I want to add. Now let's learn a little bit more about Excel environment. In the Excel environment where you see book one Excel, that is called the name of the workbook and this is the software. If I would like to change the name of the Excel workbook, I could just simply click here. This is something that has been recently added. Otherwise, previously what we used to do, we used to click on file and then hit save. Or what we used to do is, we used to use a keyboard shortcut called Control S. Whatever is the case, you can save your files. First of all, you can name your file. And then you can pick a location where you want to save it. If the location is not readily available to you in the drop down box, you can always click on more options and browse the location wherever you want to save it. So I want to save mine on the desktop. So I'll click save here and my file is saved. And as you can see in the title bar, it is now week one lesson and it says saved next to it. Now, let's learn a little bit more about the Excel environment. In Excel, you see file that is a menu. After that, home, insert, page layout, formulas, data, review, view, help. All of these are considered tabs. Anytime you click on a tab, the whole set of options changed. Now, there, since there are so many options available under each of the tabs, what Microsoft did, they created under each of the tab a group. So we have a clipboard, font, alignment, number, styles. These are group names. If I change the tab, the group names also change with it. 
In each group, these are called options. Whatever you see here, these are options. Now, some groups have more to offer than the options available. So in some of these groups, when you click on the arrow next to the group name, you see what we call a dialog box. But not all of these will lead to a dialog box. Now, some of them can also be opened with the help of a shortcut key. For example, if you want to click and open font settings, you can use the keyboard shortcut key of control, press and hold the control, then press shift and then the letter F on the keyboard. So these three key combinations will bring the font settings. Okay, now let's look at the clipboard. Next to clipboard, you have similar icon as you have next to font, but this button will bring up what we call pain. Pain stake portion of your screen and they are open while you are working with whatever you are working with. And then you can simply close the pane to regain the space. They do not hinder you from working. Unlike when you open a font setting, you cannot resume your work until you close. This is called a dialog box. So all of these tabs at the top are divided into groups and groups have options. And there are several different names for some of these buttons. For example, in the styles, uh, you can see that there are there's an arrow down and arrow up. And you also have a very strange looking arrow, which is called a more button. And this whole thing where you see these bunch of rectangles, these are called thumbnails. So when you click on the more button, you get to see the entire gallery. So anytime you have the more button, more button is usually tied to what we call a gallery. Now, if you come back here, this whole environment from home tab all the way to help tab, this whole thing, the whole rectangular bar at the top, this is called ribbon. Now, if you look at the bottom right corner of your Excel workbook, you see a plus to increase or zoom in and a minus to zoom out. You can also click on this percentage number, which is 170% right now, and that would allow you to quickly pick a an amount or you can custom type a percentage which is not available to, to you through these radio buttons. That's what these circle boxes are called, the radio buttons. You click on it and it zooms to that percent. Also in the bottom left cor right corner, you can also see that there are different views. Currently we are in the normal view, but you can switch to the page layout view, which we will learn later on in this tutorial or page break view. So right now we are in the normal view. I switch to page layout view and you come back, you get a perforated line. This line pretty much represents that up till this column will be printed on one page and anything past this column will be printed on the next page. Similarly, when you scroll down, you also see a perforated line at the bottom that shows you that from line one through line 44 and columns A through column I will be on page number one. Also, just so that you know, these square, these rectangles that you see over here on the grid, these are called cells. And wherever my uh, box is, the green box, this is called an active cell. The position of the active cell can be seen in the top left corner where it says D5 because that's where I, my active cell is. It is a meeting point of column D and row five. The name of the cell is always column name first, row name next. So if I now click in cell location B2, it will then tell me that it is B2. This is called your name box. This is where your cell location or the cell name is displayed. In the same line, you see FX and this long line. This box is called formula bar. And A, B, C, D, E, F, these are called your column headers. Similarly, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, these are called your row headers. And right here, you see these scrolls that allow you to scroll back and forth if you have to scroll back and forth. But this is your scroll bar. Now, I don't have enough number of sheets. I could just simply click and tab. But if my sheets extend this gray area and go behind the scroll bar, then these two buttons in the bottom left corner will become active to help me go through the sheets which are hidden. These are called your tab scroll buttons because each of the sheet is actually a tab.
uh, on right below this gray area where you see accessibility investigate scroll lock ready this is your status bar so this is where your status is being shown to you and these are called your scroll bars horizontal scroll bars and vertical scroll bars so this is just an overview of what an excel worksheet looks like what are excel workbooks and what are different areas within excel are called now let's say if you're interested in seeking help you click here where it says search right in the middle of your screen this is something that is part of office 365 some of these options you may not see if you have older versions of microsoft office so if I click here in the search, by default, it gives me some of the available options here. So for example, I now type here font. Now it tells me, okay, are you interested in font settings? I click on it. It opens the box for me. I don't even have to worry about. It. The only problem with this process is you don't really know where things are. You get so used to of using the help you type here. And under actions, whatever options are there under actions, that means they will automatically perform the action for you. You would not have to go and search for that item yourself. Similarly, if you go under font, it basically allows you to choose font right here. So help can be helpful for a lot of people for a lot of reasons. I hope you have enjoyed our today's tutorial. We will continue to teach you more about Microsoft Excel in the coming videos, where we will explore several topics in Microsoft Excel, starting from basics till advanced. So will see you guys next time. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe to our channel, and we'll catch you in the next tut tutorial on Microsoft Excel. Till then, bye-bye.